Um, so I am Israel. Um, I live in um, Tekoa, in Gush Etzion, in Israel. Um, well, I know Peter, but I don't know you, Elisheva, right? Okay, you want to say a word? Just uh, yes, uh, uh, I have from uh, and yes, I have a son in uh, in Tekoa and uh, daughter-in-law, and it was my daughter-in-law Hotaya oh. Ben Eliyahu that uh, sent me the link to this. So I'm from Alon Shvut. Oh, but she thought that I should okay. uh, listen to this. Good, great. Okay, I hope I hope you I hope you won't regret it. No, no, uh, I will. So I'm I'm sure. This will be very very nice. Okay, so okay, hopefully. Um, so um, last week we I mean last week we talked about time and uh, how the um, how the, the the time ends at the end of the year and there is a new time created and, and the whole concept. Of that um, um, Rosh Steinert was very much interested in that concept of time. Um, I was actually thinking it's not I, Elliot. Elliot. Uh, I'm just saying. I'm just saying a uh, uh, short, oh, I... short um, thought. About, I was. Ju I'm just saying a short thought about last week's uh, topic before we will start this week. Um, I was thinking now in Israel that we have this um, saga coming up. I don't know what the proper English word for segue for this kind of um, lockdown, maybe. Lockdown. Yeah, lockdown. And I and I thought how clever it was that they scheduled the lockdown to be right before the end of the year. So they, we all now live in that sense that the time is just running out. <laughs> so it comes it comes in, in, in good um, good um, timing. But anyway, this week I wanted to talk about chuva and uh, repentance is the usual translation i think and how how um how i understand the tshuva in rav Steinzoff's um, thoughts um so we'll do i mean in terms of of the in terms of the um framework we'll do i think similar to what we did last week so i'll say a few things and then we'll read a passage or two and, uh, and uh, like two or three times like that and of course it will be much nicer and more interesting if you share your thoughts or your reflections or or your objections or your questions um and, and i i truly i think about it more more as like a discussion uh than a class uh so i have i have some line of thought but not 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 much more than this and a few a few passages to uh to read um Rav Stadis dedicated a whole book to the uh, topic of tshuva. The book is called Tshuva. This is the, oh no, this is not the book. This is the book. You, I don't know if you can see it in the right direction. Or it has to be. Um, it's, I, I actually think it's one of his best books. <laughs> I haven't read all of them, but uh, from the ones I, the ones I read, I think it's, it's a really good book. It's, it's a book, he, uh, unlike other, some, some of the, um, many of the other books um, that were are, are like edited from um, talks or lectures. This is a book he wrote, and he wrote uh, fairly early, I think, in the early in the early 80s. And it's it's basically a, a manual, a guide for people who want who want to become from. <laughs> um, so uh, most of the book has. Uh, practical um, essays about different um, um, aspects of uh, religious Jewish life, like kashrut and Shabbat and festivals and you know, all kind of issues that uh, ch challenge people who who, uh, who start um, um, being observant. But in the beginning of the book, there are two or three chapters that are more general about. The, the process about the challenges of the process, um, etc., and one of the one of the chapters was also included in Rav Santos's book on the um, on the year on the festivals, and I think that today we'll mainly read from that chapter. So, okay, so I'll I'll, I'll start and then we'll. 
great passages too. Amen. Um, so uh, in one sentence, I think that uh, Tshuva in Rav Sass's uh, thought is basically um, a matter of decision. So, and it's a matter of decision, it's, and it's not, it's not about um, um, sins, it's related to sins or to mistakes. But this is only, um, I mean, the, the, um, the awareness of things we did wrong is only a part of a process that should le lead to, to that decision that I'm, that I, that I'm talking about. Uh, he used to talk a lot about the, um, the fact that la to, um, to repent is actually the, the the literal meaning is actually to turn or to return, but to make it to make a turn. So lashuv is to make a turn, and therefore to do to make tshuva means to get eventually to uh, after some process that we'll discuss, uh, deep internal process to um, to a state where you can make. Um, a significance and maybe life-changing or at least, at least for the time a life-changing turn that will reshape the whole way that you, one lives. Um, um, so we'll start with a short passage from that article. I'm going to share my screen and ask um, Elliot <laughs> If you're okay, uh, ask Elliot uh, if you're okay with that. Ask Elliot Very to happy. read, unless, 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 unless somebody else is also happy to be our, our, our um, uh, reader. But we'll have a few options. So one moment. One minute, I'm sorry, I had it organized, but now I can't find it. Mm. Okay. Here it is. Sorry. Okay, so if you can see my screen, it's... Um, the passage starts on number three. If we were okay, to capitalize, you, yeah. if we were asked to capitalize the subject and point to Teshuvah's starting point, we would say that Teshuvah is rooted in the point of transition from the past to the future. The turnabout of leaving the path of the past and turning to a new path for the future. Put concretely, as expressed by the very meaning of the word, Teshuvah is simply a turning, be it a complete total change of direction or a series of many separate turning points, not all of equal significance. Okay, so just up here, please. Yeah, okay, so th this is basically what I, what I said, right? So, Chuva is a turning point, a turning, and, um, and this turning is, is what separates the past from the future. And the question that I want to ask, and the question that I want to lead, to lead our conversation will be, um how does one get how does one achieve um this um um can you please state hear, or uh, can you can you please put back the so i can see the text again yes just moment just a moment thank you um one minute Yeah, so you should be able to see it now, again. Um, 
yeah, so, so I mean, this is a very, it's not, it's not something that one can do or one is interested in doing very easily or just wake up in the morning and decide to, to do a, a life-changing turn in his life. So the question is, why would I, why would I want to do it? Why would I uh, want to, to do a tshuva, to, to turn my direction? And maybe even more of a, um, how do I get to a even psychological um, state where I can actually do it, do, do this, this turn, this turning. Um, so it's, I mean, it sounds very, very um, simple, right? It sounds very uh, available, but I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't think it's, it's so, um, so this is like this, as, as the way I see it, I mean, this is, this is a nice description of uh, like an iceberg, it's the tip of the iceberg of a long process that one goes through uh, that eventually leads to that to the ability to do this turning. And I think when, when, when talking about Rosh Hashanah, when talking about the end of the year, we're talking about Elul as the month of uh, repentance. Uh, so the way that Rav Steinsel uh, used to um, talk about Elul is basically working for a whole month or working or longer in a, in a very intense way in order to get eventually to the point when one can do a tshuva. And he, um, in this essay and also in other articles and also when he used to talk um, um, to lecture, he would um, define two um, elements that um, allow um, this process to um, to be completed, and um, and the two elements are actually, I mean, it's his phrase. Um, the phrasing is might be his, but it's actually based on what Chazal, what our sages, what in the Gemara they define as the two essential elements of tshuva. So that what what are the two? If you open Rambam, for example, in Ilchot Tshuva, if you open Maimonides, it is uh, halachic. Um, um, Halachic book Mishneh Torah, where he talks about tshuva, he defines that tshuva means a. The first thing is to um, is to um, understand that, that, that I did that I did something wrong, and b to decide that I won't going to do it again. And and uh, it's in Hebrew it will be harata laavar and kabbalah laatid. So. I need to I need to understand that something is wrong in order to be in order to have even have the motivation to change it, and I need to decide that I want to change it and and say to myself and say to God I, I'm go, I'm going to change it. The future will be not like will will, will not be like the the past. So um, these two principles or these two um, rules that are um, originally referred to simple sins are also used when generally talking about tshuva as a more um, uh, spiritual and psychological process. So one needs to, to, to feel that something, that he lacks something in the way that he lives, that something is wrong, and one needs to, um, to, to, to have the will to change it. Um, and this is the, um, this is the effort this is, should be the, the focus towards uh, achieving uh, tshuva um, in, uh, before Rosh Hashanah. Um, and he used to talk a lot about um, the problem of self-satisfaction. Um, the people, uh, the human tend to feel good about themselves. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> um, and uh, and um, so this is this is the like the first thing. And, and the second thing is that uh, that we need to we need to to want to to have something uh, different. So we need to uh, think about we need to uh, maybe brighten our dreams, uh, refresh our um, um, refresh our goals, like think 
A, about what we have now, and B, about what, what actually we want to do. So the time of tshuva is not a time where one should um, be busy with his little averot or his little sins, because this will be just a waste of his time, A. And also, doing a tshuva on specific sins is something that one should do all year round. We don't need Elul, we don't need the, the high holidays and the whole is, is a special period in the year in order to do, in order to, um, to do small tshuvot, to, do, to repent on, on specific uh, problems. Uh, what we need to use Elul for is do a uh, big repentance. The big repentance is, is basically applying the same, um, the same tools just on the big thing. Uh, that means, um, as I said, um, refreshing what we want to do, thinking about like, getting out of our routine and day-to-day and -day life uh, struggles and, and take some time to... Um, uh, to think about our big goals and also uh, take the time to, to see what, what is the state of our achievements in, in the, uh, towards, towards achieving these goals. These goals. Um, and once, once we do these two things, then we might, um, might understand that we have a direction. And if this feeling is strong and powerful enough, I mean, at least the way I understand it, uh, that can can help us um, turn, do tshuva. So um, I'll we'll read a bit another another passage. Is it? It's here. One minute. I'm going, I'm going up to the first uh, sh short passage, start, starting. Uh, according to our sages, where he basically says that, um, I mean, in order to um, um, kind of sh show that there, there, there is, there is a, um, Tshuva is not, um, is not always con connected only to um, specific sins. And his, um, um, his, uh, proof or his uh, uh, source to that is what Chazal say about tshuva and creation. So let's read this passage according to our sages. Okay. Uh, yeah. I noticed you're recording this, so can I get the recording afterwards? Is that possible? Yeah, I think it should be on YouTube. Um, I'll, I'll try to send you a link. Great. Thank you so okay. much. See you soon. Sorry, I have to leave. All right. So good to see you. Good night. Good okay. To see you. So, bye bye. Shana okay. tova. Shana tova. Shana tova. Um, so who 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 can take Elliot's um, place? Elisheva, would you um, would you agree to read this passage? So my English is not uh, my first language, but anyway. Um, also, also not mine. <laughs> People, Peter will forgive us. Yeah. So, according to our sages, this possibility of altering reality, which we should regard as one of the mysterious of all being, is one of those things that, we, that were created before the creation of the world. That is to say, before the laws of nature came into existence, before the mountains were born, a principle even more fundamental and more exalted was proclaimed that change, tshuva, is possible. Yeah, so he, so he, he quotes, um, uh, there is a list, a really interesting list of, of 10 things, uh, in, some, in some sources it's more than 10 or 10 are different, but there is a really interesting list of things that Chazal, um, the sages say that were created before the creation or created, created before the world. Um, it's a really interesting list, um, but one of the things is tshuva. So how can tshuva be created before the world if tshuva is inherently uh, linked to sins? Because before the world was created, there were no sins. There wasn't even a possibility of doing a, a sin because there were no creatures. So the, the fact that tshuva is created before the world is um, that is, is, is the 
shows that um, tshuva is, I think it shows two things. One, it shows that, um, that the fundamental meaning of tshuva is actually is, 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 uh, indeed not, re not related to, to sins, but related to direction. And, and B, that, it's, that, it, that it can work. So, because what, what does it mean that somebody can do something wrong and then in some way um, erase it? How can, we, how can we erase things that happen? Um, so if, if, if tshuva is created before things were created, that means that if we achieve tshuva, if we, achieve, if we get tshuva, then we can, uh, yeah, we can somehow wipe, wipe out things that happened in the past. Um, I mean, it's, it's a whole, it's, 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 it's a, I'm not going to get in, uh, we're not going to get into, into this question now, I think, but it's really interesting to try to think about it. Like, what does it mean that we do tshuva on something that we did in the past and now it's not recorded anywhere uh, anymore? Um, maybe we'll, maybe we'll talk about it uh, next. Um, when we'll talk about Yom Kippur, but now I want to focus just about the, the, this, this element of tshuva, the aid it's possible. So a person can, person can change the direction of his life. One can, can change the direction of one's life. And, but I, I want to emphasize again that I think that it's, it's not so simple. So, um, it, it does require a long and deep process um, um, that requires effort and focus and time. And this is what we're trying to do uh, during the month of Elul. Um, so now let's read number four. Let's see a minute. Okay, Peter. Peter, can you read number four, or shall I do it? I I had to unmute myself. Um, number four. Yeah, it's a bit longer than the previous ones, but I'm sure you can you can manage. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, in short, Teshuva is a world unto itself, embracing two apparent opposites. On the one hand. It is an exceedingly lengthy path, which in fact has no end point. When a person wants to attain Teshuva, then whatever his starting point, each subsequent moment of change throughout life becomes the fulfillment of that inner, initial inner resolution to make a turn. On the other hand, Teshuva is a tiny point a turnabout in miniature. Teshuva is a moment of reflection, remorse, and thought of change. Teshuva is a flash of insight that instructs a person to change, to improve. These two aspects of Teshuva are not contradictory, but complementary. In one respect, there is nothing more difficult than doing Teshuva, because Shuva means transforming its oneself, fashioning a new nature. A minute. Yeah, in another respect. Uh, in another respect, there is nothing easier than to Shuva. A split second of turning is already considered to Shuva. Do you want me to? Ah, the yeah, bow just the last. Teshuva, yeah, just the last. Huh? Okay, yeah, yeah, the, bal, yeah. the Baal Teshuva, the penitent, is thus like a person following a certain course who in an instant decides to change his direction. From that point onward, he no longer goes the old way, but in a different way. Yet the new path, like the old one, is long and unending. Thank you. Um, yes, so... Forgive my English accent. <laughs> no, we really needed it because once Elliot <laughs> left, uh, once Elliot left, when Elliot left, we we had to we had to uh, to get somebody else. Um, Bayer. 
Okay, so Peter, um, okay, do you want, do you, does anybody want to um, uh, just summarize or have any, uh, what do you think, Peter? I know you think, I, I know you have thoughts, so please. I, I, I never, unfortunately, ever had the, the advantage, the opportunity to hear Ralf Steinsaltz talking about Shuva. So this like opens a real window for me. Um, I, I, I think that the idea of, um, I think first of all, it, it's an absolutely beautiful and wondrous idea that Teshuvah was created before the world came into being. Um, it, it's such an, optimistic view and it creates such wonderful possibilities for us um, and really in many ways I mean it only makes sense I mean, the, the whole of life only makes sense if like Shuva was waiting for us when when we arrived otherwise the world would be a really horrendous place um, so I'm, I'm very taken by that. I, I don't have a problem of the, that we're walking along a path. The path is lengthy. It can be stony. It can be hilly. It can be straight. It can be many things. And I don't have a problem of Shiva being, a a moment, a, a, a kind of flash in time when we go on to hopefully a new and better path. My whole question, and maybe we're coming to it, so you forgive me if I'm, as we English say, jumping the gun. Um, but my big question is always, eh, how, how to do it? Um, I, uh, I mean, at least of some of my faults, I'm aware. I have friends who are very good at pointing out the other faults of which I'm not aware. <laughs> um, uh, good friend. Mamash. No, that's, 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 no, yeah. that's absolutely true. I mean, I think one of the greatest gifts we can have is a friend who in a, a positive and supportive way points out to us things that we're not aware of in ourselves. I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, but I mean, if I take a banal example, um, I, I don't smoke, but um, if I smoked, I know smoking is wrong. So I decide to give up smoking. When I smoked, I was the world expert on giving up smoking because I promised to give up every time I finished a cigarette and it lasted until I smoked the next cigarette. And I think the how to change is, uh, to me, the biggest question. This is in a sense about sensing what and the point at which it happens, but how? It's not always just an act of will. Uh -huh. That's um, my struggle. Yeah. Yes, I think I think this is probably the um, the most important question. Um. And I, I, I think that it might, it might be easier to think about it, to separate it into two questions. Please. One is how, how do I, how do I, um, um, how do I put myself into a process after which I'll be. I will, I'll have the motivation to change, right? So I need. I need to get to get. So I need like 
There's a description here, a tshuva is a flash. So flash of insight can, see, can be something that comes as a gift from, the, from heaven. Um, but uh, I would want to hope that the flash of insight, this kind of flash of insight, is also something I can try to, to achieve. So this is, this is one, one question would be, well, when I have this flash of insight, how do I um, like maintain it after the flash goes away, fades away, right? Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer. I, I, I'm not sure I can I from my um, personal experience, but I can, I can, I can quote two stories. Um, oh, yes. One story and one Has and one Hasidic um, and one Hasidic. Um, uh, so the story is a story that Rav um told us once, maybe more than once. I don't remember if I had it more than once. I, I think I had this from here quite a few years back, not in the last few years. Um, he told us that when he was young, he was driving somewhere in Israel, in the south. I suspect it might have been when he was, um, he used to be a head teacher of a school in his mm -hmm. early 20s in the Negev. And he was driving the car and he was driving to a certain direction where he thought he was going, he should be going. And at some point he started feeling something weird about what was going out of the car. So he started, he wasn't sure he was, everything was okay. And, and that feeling kind of um, strengthened. And at some point he, he realized that he, he, he basically drove into Gaza. Um, and he said that understanding that, and then as soon as, as possible, turning the car around and starting driving the other way around, this is the moment of doing tshuva. So doing wow. tshuva means that you realize that you have this, it can be a sudden wow. rea realization or, or uh, just a, a process that gets to a peak you realize that you're going this way instead of in this way and then you're just turning the car so technically you're still in the same place exactly but because <laughs> you turn the car to the other <laughs> direction now you're already doing tshuva that it did your actual position so that was that was uh, something i remember him telling us as a as a as, a, as a, an example uh, or a way to think about tshuva. Um, so maybe if I if I'm going back to the what I, I described as the first question. So achieving this flash is looking to the side, checking if I am going the the right direction, uh, being able to um, to identify to understand what I see outside and, and, and process it. And, uh, and realize that it's wrong. And then, and then I can fully and completely make that turn of the car, turn the car to the other way around. Um, another story or another, another idea that he used, to, he used to talk a lot about, he, when he talked about Hasidim, um, and he had a question, how can, define themselves as Hasidim. If you, if you go to rabbinic literature and you, you see what, what Chazal uh, defined as uh, to be a Hasid is one of the highest um, titles one can, um, one can uh, aspire to. It's like, to be Hasid is, is, is above a lot of other um, madrigot, uh, spiritual levels. Yes. So how can he go around and say I'm a chassid? How can how can you say you're chassid if you're not even close to being uh, what, what should be a chassid? So he said the chassidim. Um, one can say that he is chassid because he's he's on the path of chassidim of chassidut. So if I go back to the to the example of the car, once you turned the car around uh, to the other direction. You can say you are a chassid because you're now going to the on the you're going your 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 path leads to the right direction. So um, 
So you can, you can uh, say that you're a Hasid because you're going you're on the way to be a Hasid. But, the, but, but then you actually you have to, to, to stay on the way. And that, that takes me to the, to, the, to the second part, to the second question, is how to maintain this flash, right? How to, how to make this into a, an actual turning point that will last. And I, I'm not smoking and I also haven't smoked it, so. I'm not, so I don't, I don't know if it actually will work or not, but I remember a really beautiful uh, Hasidic phrase. I think it's attributed to the Rabbi Israel of Rijin, the first uh, uh, Rijin Rabbi, Rabbi Israel Friedman of Rijin, who is the great, great grandson of the Maggid of, uh, from Ezrich. <coughs> and he said, um, uh, he was trying to, he, he said, what's the difference between uh, a fool and a wise? It's like a person walking in the dark in a field is full of um, uh, stones and, and uh, ditches and he can't see the way and he falls, falls all the time. And then suddenly there is a flash of, um, of lights. There's lightning. So... Uh, the fool, he looks up and he enjoys the beauty, beauty, beautiness, the beauty of the, of the, of the lightning. Mm -hmm. And the wise uses the, the lightning to quickly look around to see, to see where he can walk from now on. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I like thinking about, about this um, in this context of tshuva that, I mean, we're trying, we're trying to, to uh, put ourselves in a process of um, focus on inner, on our, on our motivations, in order to eventually get to a point where we have this flash of, of light. But then we have to also know or uh, learn how to how to use it for the for the future. Like he's saying here in this passage, that, that we that tshuva is, is one is mo one moment, right, um, of, of of reflection, a flash of insight. But it's also the beginning of uh, of an endless um, of of a new route, and we need to stay on the route. So yeah, so these are my my thoughts about about about, um, um, about this. I don't know if it's convincing or it's helpful. Um, what do you what do you think? Can I say something? Please. Uh, for me, I have been Jewish, uh, it will be uh, four years, four years now, I don't even remember, it was 2015, yeah, so it will be five years soon, and uh, so, uh, so that was 2015, but uh, when I left the Christianity, it was 2010, and it was like, it happens, it was in mm -hmm. uh, September 2009, I suddenly understood that uh, Yeshua is not God. And so after that, that was my point, I could say, of Shuva. That I started to drive in the other direction. But it took so long time to find out uh, what is the truth, where to go, who to talk with. And finally, 2014 in December, I ended up here in Alonshut with two of my children and we converted in Mahon Meir and in Mahon Ra. And uh, so, uh, Peter, when you were talking about that, like how to do and, you know, how to, how to know, for me, it was a very big turning point because, and when I was sitting and studying and they were talking about different things in Judaism and when I was thinking about the things that I, I've been doing as a Christian, I thought it was very, very good things I've been doing because I was also a teacher in church. So, so I was really professional in these things. And then suddenly I understood like, okay, wow, that was a sin and that was a sin and that wasn't good and that wasn't cool or, or you know, all these things. So, uh, but I had, I had set my, my line, I'm going in this direction. So, and then it was, I had to do like, in a way, tshuva all the time for all the things that I didn't even know was wrong. So, uh, and this means absolutely not that I don't 
need to do chuva. I need to do chuva for many things also today. Yes. But uh, uh, so when th that we saw about the bal chuva, I don't now remember if we read about it. I took print screen of it. Uh, so and it says like this. Yeah, the bal chuva is those like a person following a certain course who in an instance decide to change his direction. From that point onward, he no longer goes the old way, but a different way. Yet the new path, like the old one, is long and unending. I mean, it will always come up things. But I think, for me, when I, I'm thinking more about myself like a Balchuva than an Ed convert, because I was in one direction in life, and I up my, my eyes and I started a, a religious Jewish Orthodox way. So uh, I'm very impressed every time when I meet someone that is about Chuba. Um, I mean, I choose, I choose to be Jewish. And, uh, <laughs> and just, the, just the things to, I think this is also one of the things, just to make a choice. I want to do this. That gives a strength to also do it. So I think it's the same thing with all kind of... Uh, Chuba, wow. if you decide, I want to do it, I like to start to do this and this, or I will stop doing that and that. That decision will give us also strength to uh, follow the path. Wow, what a story. <laughs> My marsh. Thank you. Thank you so much for, um, yeah. Yeah, for wow. sharing it. Yeah, thank yeah you. I mean, I've been, I'm no, there's, there's to show me in action. Uh, uh, to buy and, and yeah, you, you should have been um, uh, delivering this lecture, not me. Hello. Uh, thank you. Hello. <laughs> 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 so I, 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 I didn't say too much of a nonsense. No, um, absolutely not. It was, <laughs> no, it's very interesting. Uh, it's very interesting. Thank you very also, much. Also, Hashem didn't make, he didn't, he didn't uh, create me to a man. You see, there is a reason for everything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I know my where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. For your chuba, really had an insight. It's just, you had a, a moment, a, a changing moment that everything moved. I think yeah. it's, sometimes it's, it, it's harder because you have to make this step to change your life, a total change of direction. But yeah. in another way, it's, it's, sometimes it's harder to do chuba when you're not sure when you're taking that step because you don't have, have an insight. You struggle to understand. Exactly. Because for me, it was such a big difference. So uh, I couldn't, I mean, if people are asking me, uh, what can I say? I, it was a big, big, so it was a, such a big uh, difference. And even, you know, when I went to work, how I suddenly dressed and how I was eating. And, you know, it was a big uh, change. I couldn't hide it. To a person that lives in a Jewish environment all the time it might be even a little bit harder i guess because uh, once uh, once i asked Rav Steinsatz about it because he was a bal chuva and he said um the day when he decided to put a kippah on his head it was a very he felt like everybody was talking about him behind his back did you see what he was wearing <laughs> and but he said the first day was the hardest but afterwards afterwards it's okay already it's just that change that is scary but after you make the change exactly. you're okay you don't keep feeling that feeling every day yeah. it wasn't it like that with the uh, rab akiva that he did he didn't want to go to uh, uh to the school because he was old and his wife told him like sit back uh, sit uh, backside on uh, on the donkey and uh you know ride a, and uh, he felt very embarrassed but after a while no one made just in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Rav, Israel. Yeah, I stopped hearing you. Any Shana? Yeah? Yes. Yeah, okay. I just, my, my connection is, is not stable, I guess. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, I think I think we'll um, we'll finish now for this week. Um, we'll meet again, whoever is interested, in a week's time.
just before um, Yom Kippur to discuss um, to discuss Yom Kippur and maybe maybe some of Sukkot. Not sure about. I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah. So I just I just want to wish everybody Shana Tova, Lulav Chatima Tova, and uh, and to all of us um, good luck <laughs> in in uh, making doing Tshuva. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Shana Tova. Toda Shana Tova Vamatuka. Kulam. You too, Peter, everybody. Toda. Good night. 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 Good night.